When I think of regulatory challenges in preparing for audits, the first place I would jump to would be just having auditors that know the regulations. So what I mean here is I have certain folks that will, um, you know, bring in people to do audits, either internally or externally, and those auditors may not have the depth of knowledge needed to actually conduct a true valuable audit. Um, there are some people that if they do not understand fully what they're looking for, that you might go through an audit, you might receive a, a perfect passing score. And that's not because everything is buttoned up and there are no compliance gaps. It's because the auditor may not have known what to look for. So if you're thinking of regulatory challenges, it's just at the outset, kind of step one is who is in the position to fully understand not only the regulations, but how they are actually applied in practice and who can combine those two things to do a valuable audit to actually unearth the compliance gaps rather than just ignore them. So one of the critical steps here in ensuring compliance when you're doing these types of safety audits is staying on top of the regulations. So if you're in an industry like aerosol shipping and manufacturing, the aerosol regulations have been around, have been stabilized within the US DOT regulations for 30, 40, shoot, even 50 years. Lithium batteries are different. So lithium battery regulations only within the last decade have even been put on the books. And within these last decade, we've seen constant changes. And this is sometimes as quickly as every year, every two years, the actual regulations around packaging, marking, labeling, state of charge, storage, these types of things are constantly evolving because the lithium battery space is constantly evolving in terms of uh, technological advancement. And so if you're looking to put together an audit program, the checklist and the parameters that you were looking for back in 2018, 2020, even 2022 are likely no longer applicable to what we see today. So if you're thinking about compliance challenges, one of the biggest one is staying on top of where the current regulations are going and how they evolve into the future. Because again, if you're trying to do audits based on how the, uh, how the market looked back in 2018, you are gonna be providing very little value. So in terms of staying on top of the regulations, there are a lot of ways to do that. Um, you know, usually some of the most effective ways are joining trade associations. Uh, and that could be within the lithium battery space, PRBA. That could be the Medical Device Transport Council if you're a medical device manufacturer. Um, that could be CASA as well, because those trade associations do a, lot of, do a lot of the work for you in terms of attending the meetings, working with regulators, understanding what these regulations are, and then disseminating them in a pretty clear and understandable way to their members. So that would be a recommendation in terms of staying on top of these lithium battery changes is getting involved uh, with some of these leading trade associations. So for companies that are looking to stay audit ready, um, I think a great place to start is with employee training. Um, so this is something where the audit is only good as the auditor. So if you have internal people conducting these audits for you, it's important that they truly understand what they're looking for because if they're not sure what to look for, the actual results of the audit are not gonna be worth very much for you. Um, so if you're training employees to conduct these audits, and you know, it's not, a, it's not as simple as here's a checklist and you know go out and check the box, look for these 10 things, look for these other 10 things. Um, it's also about understanding not only what the rules say, but how they actually exist in your environment in terms of how your operation complies with packaging rules, with labeling rules, with storage rules. Um, so it's something that from our perspective, when we're looking to train up auditors, um, you know, again, not only ensuring that they understand the regulations, but the more experience you can give them in different environments, the better. So if you do have an in-house auditing program, and let's say, for example, your company has 50 to 100 facilities around the country, having the same auditor audit the same facility every time may not be as valuable as having an auditor do a sample at different facilities around the country, because the more different experiences, different settings that they can get in, uh, oftentimes the more valuable outcome of an, of an audit would be.